For over half a century, millions upon millions of children have been entertained by the television program Sesame Street. But little do they know about the dark past of one of its main stars. It goes without saying that Elmo is by far the most iconic character of Sesame Street. The lovable creature's popularity has led him to appear on talk shows, video games, movies, albums, and even becoming one of the largest toy fads of all time. But it wasn't always this way, as he wasn't even one of the original characters on Sesame Street, debuting more than a decade after the fact. When first introduced in 1980, the little monster was actually an afterthought. In fact, he was originally designed to be a background character. However, one writer took a specific liking to the furry red puppet, and decided to name him Elmo, before inserting him into skits. For years, Elmo would be passed around to different performers, who struggled to make him distinct. The most notorious of these early iterations would be Richard Hunts, who gave him an off-putting, gruff demeanor. Me, Claudius? No, 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 no! Me, Claudius. This all changed, though, on one fateful evening in November of 1984. It's said that shortly after filming in the morning, Hunt became frustrated with playing the character. He exited the Muppet green room expressing desires to give up, and tossed Elmo into the lap of then-unknown puppeteer Kevin Clash. The aspiring performer accepted the mantle immediately, recording his first performance as the character later that day. Unlike those before him, Kevin had a clear vision for Elmo, feeling he should embody love. So as the years went on, he attempted to fine-tune the idea, slowly shaping him into the adorable character we all know of today. Before long, he was taking up more and more of the show's focus, becoming known as the star of Sesame Street. By the mid-90s, the Tickle Me Elmo toy was so popular that the 400,000 unit inventory completely sold out after four months. Given this occurred just before the holiday season, the scarcity caused a panic so severe it was later called Elmo Mania. Reports began to surface of adults physically fighting over the doll, as well as chasing delivery trucks trucks they believed to contain shipments. It even led to a Walmart clerk being trampled, as a crowd of 300 shoppers stampeded the aisles after spotting the employee holding a box of the toys. He suffered from a broken rib, a pulled hamstring, and a concussion. Following Elmo Mania, the character was given his own segment called Elmo's World on the show. Kevin was soon assigned more responsibilities, helping recruit, audition, and train new puppeteers. By 2007, he was promoted to the senior creative advisor of Sesame Workshop. Even beyond being the sole performer of the show's most popular character, Kevin was essential to the show. And so, it was devastating for Sesame Street when in late 2012, he was forced to resign after being accused of sexual abuse. This occurred when reports began to surface that the kind-hearted family man might possibly have some very dark secrets. We'll learn more about this after a brief word from our sponsor. It's a common trope that traditional wallets take up way too much space and are uncomfortable in your pockets. Exter, the world's largest smart wallet brand, is trying to fix that though. They design innovative solutions to improve the way you carry your everyday items, including high-end, trackable wallets designed to keep your valuables safe, slim, and stylish. The ease of the card mechanism allows you to choose what you need at a moment's notice. They also feature RFID protection protection to keep your money, your cards, and your identity safer than ever before. And with leather sourced from LWG gold-related tanneries, you know that it will hold up over the years. And on top of all this, if you ever lose it or it gets stolen, it's trackable worldwide. So if you want to get an extra wallet for yourself or a loved one, click the link in the description down below. And if you act fast, you can get 35% off anything site-wide plus free gift bags during their Christmas sale. 
By the time the 2000s came around, Kevin Clash had become a staple in the children's entertainment industry. But unknown to the outside world, behind the scenes it appeared his personal life was in shambles. In 2003, he and his wife of 17 years filed for divorce. This was especially unfortunate given the couple had a 10-year-old daughter. In a memoir he released three years after the separation, he wrote, Often it is harder to find the courage to face a personal personal difficulty than it is to understand and accept a large-scale tragedy. We love each other deeply, but after 17 years, it was not enough to sustain our marriage. What the public didn't know at the time, however, was that it wasn't just typical marital issues that tore them apart. Kevin began to struggle with his sexuality, eventually coming to terms with the fact that he was a closeted homosexual. This fact would remain a secret for years, until November 12, 2012 when TMZ published an article titled, Voice of Elmo Denies Sex with Underage Boy. The gossip website received word that a 23-year-old man named Sheldon Steffens had claimed to have a sexual relationship with the voice actor when he was just 16. In response, Kevin admitted to having dated the young man, but insisted it was only after the accuser became of age. The article notes that the allegations had been brought to the Sesame Workshop prior, who conducted an internal investigation that found them unsubstantiated. In response to the piece, Kevin took a leave of absence and issued several statements opening up about his sexuality. I am a gay man. I have never been ashamed of this or tried to hide it, but felt it was a personal and private matter. I had a relationship with the accuser. It was between two consenting adults, and I am deeply saddened that he is trying to make it into something it was not. In a surprise turn of events, the next day Sheldon recanted his allegations, and issued a statement affirming it was an adult consensual relationship. And so, that was the end of the story, right? It was an untrue claim as admitted by both sides. Well, perhaps not, because while one would expect this to have led to a full public redemption for the puppeteer, unfortunately, it was just the beginning. First things first, the needed context for Sheldon's retraction was that behind the scenes the two had reached a legal settlement. Steffens would be paid $125,000 by Kevin if he publicly admitted he was of age during their time together. On top of this, a week later, TMZ published a second article detailing allegations from an entirely different accuser. They reported that a $5 million lawsuit had been filed by a man named Cecil Singleton. It alleges that in 2003, at the age of 15, he had met Kevin through a gay telephone chat line. This apparently led to real-life dates, where the teen was showered with expensive dinners and gifts. While he could tell the older man was wealthy, the boy recalled having no idea who he was as Clash refused to forfeit his last name. It was only upon asking the phone operator that he discovered it was, in fact, Elmo. One hour after the second wave of allegations reached the media, Kevin formally resigned from Sesame Street, ending his 28-year stay with the organization. In response, they also released a statement. Unfortunately, the controversy surrounding Kevin's personal life has become a distraction that none of us want and he has concluded that he can no longer be effective in his job and has resigned from Sesame Street. The second accuser held a media conference later that day, explaining how they engaged in several lurid activities. Following these developments, the first man to speak out expressed remorse in recanting his statements, stating that he'd been instructed to lie. He reflected in an interview, I did lie on film because of what my lawyer advised me and what the contract had said. I didn't know other people would be influenced by me to come forward. If I had known that, I would have never signed the contract. I would have just been a role model for people and a voice for people. Honestly, I feel like I was set up. Shockingly, one week later, a third accuser filed a federal lawsuit against Kevin, with this individual choosing to remain anonymous. Because of this, he'll be referred to henceforth as John Doe. 
The alleged relationship is said to have begun in 2000, before Clash was divorced, and when Doe was only 16. Like Singleton, he too claimed to have met the voice actor using a gay telephone chat line. According to the legal document, John and Kevin Clash spoke on the telephone for a couple of days and Kevin Clash invited John to come to his apartment in Manhattan. John traveled from New Jersey into Manhattan to see Kevin Clash at his apartment. Kevin Clash gave John alcohol and groomed him. Kevin Clash and John engaged in sexual contact. While in Kevin Clash's apartment, John saw numerous Elmo dolls and photographs of Elmo with famous people such as Beyonce and Tyra Banks. Yet even this wasn't the end. The fourth and final accuser to pursue legal action against the puppeteer came forward on December 10th. Like John Doe, this individual also remained anonymous. The accuser claimed to have met Kevin in the late 90s, once again while he was still married. He allegedly lured the 16-year-old to visit him in New York while vacationing in Miami. He offered to cover the boy's travel expenses, provide a place to stay, and to be a quote-unquote dad to him. It's said that in early 1996, this trip occurred, with the complaint alleging that they had sexual contact on multiple occasions. With now three concurring lawsuits against him, the case against Kevin Clash seemed damning. It's worth pointing out that they were all being represented by the same lawyer, Jeff Herman, who was confident his clients would find closure. But there was one pivotal issue overlooked by the plaintiffs that not only undermined the case, but prevented it from being admitted entirely. You see, there is a statute of limitations for federal claims. They either must be filed within six years of the incident or three years after the defendants turn 21. With the litigants in their late 20s and early 30s, this time frame had long since elapsed. They attempted to circumvent this by stating that the psychological effects of their abuse weren't fully realized until 2012. But this argument was unproven, and only time would tell if it held up in court. The only accuser who undoubtedly would have had his case heard was Sheldon Steffens, who was 23 years of age during the initial suit. Eventually, he did attempt to refile, even including new allegations of Kevin inviting him to a crystal meth party. However, this wouldn't be done until after he turned 24, just exceeding the three-year limitation. In July of 2013, all three of the cases being represented by Jeff Herman were dismissed. The judge ruled that the accusers had, in fact, waited too long to sue, and after several failed appeals, Kevin Clash was officially cleared of sexual abuse. Sheldon Steffen's case was also dismissed. To this day, it remains in the air how much truth there was to their story stories with none of the accusers getting their day in court. Following this, Mr. Clash opted to remain out of the public eye until 2018, when he returned to puppeteering with the adult-oriented film The Happy Time Murders, his first work with the Jim Henson Company since resigning, and it appears he will never return to children's programming. As for the red puppet he turned into a national treasure, the people at Sesame Street have been on the record stating, Elmo is bigger than anyone one person. Because of this, shortly after Kevin's departure from the program, a young puppeteer he'd mentored named Ryan Dillon took over the role, one that he's continued to perform to this very day. Even though the accusations have never been proven in court, I feel it's still surprising that the general public has all but forgotten about this story. And with that, I think I'll end the video here. So until next time, thanks for watching.